I've been playing chess for over a decade. It's safe to say that in those 10 years, I may have learned something that maybe you still don't know. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the things that I think helped me improve the most. Let's go. So I've been playing chess for 10 years. I started when I was young and uh, I'm very grateful to my brother, Daniel, if you're watching this, thank you very much, that uh, actually introduced me to it. So that's it. That's that. The first thing we're going to talk about is materialism. Many players hold on to material way too much, learn to prioritize activity over material, sacrifice pawns to open lines for your stronger pieces. Something that has happened a lot and keeps happening to beginners is you're taught to take care of your pawns and your knights. Your, your, your chess coach at the beginning tells you, hey, don't do that. Don't give away pawns. And that's very strict and we, we learn to take care of it too much. But what happens is that at some point you have to learn how to prioritize activity rather than material. Let me show you. This is this is a position from the game, the opera game, Paul Morphy against the Duke of Brunswick, uh, or the Duke Carl. And um, Black played pawn to b5. Paul Morphy is playing with the white pieces, and many beginners would think, oh, my my bishop is attacked by the pawn, I have to move the bishop away. Bishop d3 or bishop e2. That's actually a mistake. What many players are forgetting about is that material is not the most important thing. The most important thing in chess is whoever checkmates first wins, right? So in this position, Paul Morphy plays knight 6b5, and you're going to say, David, that's giving up a knight for two pawns. So mathematically, that's not, that's not good. And I agree, mathematically, it's not good. But in this position, it is very good, because black has to do something about the check. After blocking, white castle queenside, and white's pieces are very active. In fact, Paul Morphy ended up bringing this last strong piece into the game and checkmating black. So that's what materialism means. Don't be materialistic. Okay. Let's, do, let's see if I can do this successfully. There we go. The next thing we're going to talk about is don't memorize. And this is specifically uh, okay, uh, a part um, about the opening. So this was really specifically against the opening theory. If you purely memorize the moves of an opening, you run the risk of not understanding the position later on. You're trying to understand the, an opening. You don't want to memorize an opening. Why? Well, let me show you another example. We have this position right here. Let's say the white pieces have spent one hour memorizing opening theory wrong and the black pieces have been spending one hour each day practicing and training tactics good so we're looking at this at this sorry from the the bad perspective just on purpose so i can show you what i mean white plays pawn to d4 d4 pawn to d5 knight f3 knight f6 everything normal knight c3 and white is very happy about this knight is like whoa Look, white is, white is happy about this, and this knight c3 move is not very common. Normally, the queen's gambit is played, or, or some sort of London with knight f3 is played, but knight c3 is not very common. And black says, well, okay, I'm just going to keep developing my pieces. White plays bishop f4, which is what the theory says, because white has memorized a lot, right? And after e6, queen d2, knight c6, black is just developing pieces normally. And queen's at castling, do you know what happens? White is very happy, white knows... That in the book of opening theory, the author said bishop e7, and after that, king b1 with the h3 g4 plan. That's what the, the author says. And if black played bishop e7, then white will play king b1, and maybe h3 g4 will be strong, right? But what happens is that black plays bishop b4, which is also very logical, and in fact, it's actually better. And now white is shocked, because white is left alone. White, is now, have, white now has to think for themselves. Which is was what was not happening before. White was just memorizing moves, and that's not understanding. So after bishop b4, white uses memory once again. But now this is a very big mistake. King b1. In this position, queen e3 was the best to get out of this pin. But king b1 was played, trying to use the same idea from before. But that's not showing good understanding of this opening. Because after knight e4, uh oh, this is bad news. Queen e3 has to be played. And after bishop takes e3, you have to take with the pawn. And this is ugly. This is what we call a damaged pawn structure. And not only that, knight a5 is coming, knight c4 attacking the queen. This knight is in an outpost. f2 is weak. You can't get this bishop out. It's an absolute disaster. It's almost a decisive advantage for black. So that's what I mean. Don't memorize opening. Just understand. Okay. Let's go back to this. Let's see if I can... There we go. The next one we're going to talk about is patience. To lose patience is to lose the game. Chess is extremely complicated. Take your time to digest the position and then you can figure out what he wants. The first player that comes to my mind when I talk about patience is none other than Magnus Carlsen. So the best chess player in the world. Why? Well, 
Once again, let me show you. In this game, with the black pieces, we have Magnus, and with the white pieces, we have Vladimir Fedoseyev, who's a very strong Russian Grandmaster. Uh, white played queen e3, uh, offering a queen trade, black accepted. And in this position, white is offering a draw to, to Magnus. So Fedoseyev offers a draw to Magnus, and Magnus says, no thank you. And it is equal. So this is objectively equally 0.00, .00 if, you, if I turn on the engine, which means that this is a draw played with perfect chess. But of course, humans are not perfect. And what Magnus does is that he just makes moves and he's just patient. He just tries some things, centralizes the bishops, uh, so the bishop moves the bishop away. A couple of pawns get traded, which should benefit white, but it's still not easy. And after a little bit more waiting and patience, black goes for this king d5 idea. David, that's sacrificing a pawn. Yeah, but it's momentarily because you're going to get the pawn back. And now we get this end game, which is no longer easy at all because white has a knight and black has a bishop. If you study endgames, you're going to know that bishops are generally better than knights because endgames are open positions. And in open positions, usually the bishop is better than the knight. So in this pawn race, the bishop will be able to support black's pawns and stop white's pawn from h in the h file from promoting. So after a couple more moves, white tried some things, but tried this last stalemate trick. Of course, black is not going to take this would be stalemate. But of course, king b3 was played and white resigned. Be patient. Okay, let's go back to this. Uh, and there we go. The next one we're going to talk about is prophylax. So we were in patience. The next one we're going to talk about, let me just make sure. It's prophylaxis. So chess is a two-player game. Your opponent's ideas are as important as yours. Don't forget about your adversary's resources and prevent them. Another word for prophylaxis is, or another way of talking about this is just preventing what your opponent wants to do. It's very easy to forget about what your opponent wants to do. It's many people tell me, David, I'm I'm already worried about what I want to do. Sometimes I don't even know what I what I I should do. Why should I worry about what my opponent wants to do? But the curious thing and the very interesting thing is that. Some positions require you to pay attention to your opponent's resources. And some positions specifically want you to prevent your opponent, opponent's resources. Let me show you. In this position, uh, this one, with the... Oh, I spoiled you a little bit. White played g4, launching a king side attack. Black played g6. And after g5, knight d5, white played queen g4. Now, queen g4 is an attacking move. How do I know that? Well... First of all, my king is a little bit unsafe. This is a grand diagonal. The rook is on h3, so it can go to h. It's attacking h7. And my pieces seem to be more looking in the queen side. So this is already something that I, I can tell is going to be dangerous for black. Now, this is a critical moment. Many of you would think and would rush into playing bishop takes before. Look at that. Oh, that's an extra pawn. Uh, that's I'm going to take this pawn. I'm winning now. Yeah. You're going to miss your opponent's resource. You're not, you're not prophylactic, you were not prophylactic, and after rook takes h7, white is winning. Black is lost. King takes h7, you're going to say, David, that's a free rook. No, it's not. King h, queen h4 check. If you go to g7, this is double check, and it's going to be checkmate very soon. And if you go to g8, knight f5 is strong either way. This is a double attack. This is kind of a fork. Queen h8 is mate, and knight takes e7 is there. You can't stop both of them, so black is losing. Let's say f6, just to prevent the checkmate, and you lose the queen, and eventually the game. So in this position, after queen g4, you have to find the prophylactic h5, pawn to h5. Of course, if the queen moves, then there's no longer rook takes or 7 So you're going to say, David, look, you can take on passant. You forgot about that. No, I didn't. This is the whole point. G takes h6, and the idea is that you're going to play king h7 in front of the pawn. Now, the reason why this is so successful or, or so efficient is that you're using your opponent's pawn as a shield. And this is better than using your own pawns as a shield. You know why? Because white cannot sacrifice anymore. This pawn is on the way, and white would wish to not have this pawn, but it is, and it, it is beneficial for black. So after this, black actually won the game. There's no real attack against black's game. So be prophylactic. The next one we're going to talk about is the result. Stop worrying about the result or losing rating points. It will distract you from playing your best. Create the habit of focusing on content rather than the result. This is a little bit difficult to do, even for me. Um, many times we get too invested with the result. We get too invested with rating. And it actually backfires. So let me tell you something pretty funny. When we're thinking about this, we're like, oh, I don't want to lose. If I lose, I lose rating points. So we're thinking about it during our game. But the fact that you're thinking about it during your game 
it's going to make the chances of you losing higher. So you will end up losing rating points just by thinking about that. Now, I know it's not that not, not that easy, sorry. It is very difficult to, to stop thinking about rating. But one way I like doing it is just focusing purely on the content. Let me show you a game that was played by none other than very strong player Ian Nepomniachtchi against another strong player, Salem Saleh from Saudi Arabia. And it was a brilliant game by Nepo. He played the, the middle game like this very, very well. Um, at some point, he played a knight a4, trying to get to knight b6. So black had to give up the bishop pair. And eventually, black went for this sacrifice. And it didn't work out because white played extremely accurately. White played the like, killed absolutely all compensation. And eventually, it was obvious that white was winning because white has an extra piece uh, because black sacrificed. Now, in this position, after king g7, White blundered, and Ian Nepomniachtchi blundered with pawn to c6. Why? Because after queen b6 check, king h1, knight f2, king h2, knight g4, this is now perpetual check. The white from winning now is drawing, and that's of course not good, because you wanted to win away. Now, of course, Nepo shook his head, He was there's a video about this, but he also smiled. And I, what I want to believe is that these players sometimes know when to focus on the content, and this game was very well played by Nepo. A result like this is of course frustrating, but if you manage to 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 focus on the res uh, sorry on the content and think, well, this game was very well played. I just relaxed for one move and it was over, which is classic for chess, but it doesn't mean I played horrible. It actually means that I just relaxed one second and I ruined all my advantage. So, focus on the on the on the content rather than the result. Try not to be so obsessed about rating and, 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 and results in ranking. All of these things are most of the time backfiring. So let's move on. I think we... Oh, there we go. And the last three are going to be without examples. And they're very important. The first one is going to be health. Um, meaning that you should sleep well, stay hydrated, have a snack during the game. This is what I usually do. I usually eat dry, fru dry fruits like nuts. Um, I also usually eat salmon or omega... Is it four or five? I eat fish foods, which usually are good for the brain. Uh, I exercise as well, and uh, usually you should play in a silent environment. All of this is because chess is not only mentally demanding, but physically demanding. And it's, it's, not, it's not a secret. You can look at the facts. Uh, Kasparov Karpov match. Karpov had to stop the match because he was losing way too much weight, getting ill, getting sick. This is real. Um, the second last we're going to take a look at is similar to the one that we talked about about the result, but it's how to lose. Um, in chess, if you lose, it's mainly because of your decisions. You will lose many games and that's fine. What's important is to learn from your mistakes. You're going to lose many games and you're, you'll, you will have to eventually learn how to lose, which means that you lose and you have to try to, okay, man, channel your emotions. Okay, you're getting angry, you're getting a little bit sad. Sure, that's allowed should show you should steam off but afterwards try to focus as soon as possible into your mistakes into learning from that um it's it's true that you learn more from your mistakes rather than your wins and uh i i, I always get the sense that i'm losing more than i'm winning for some reason and i've 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 i would like to believe that i've i've been dealing with it pretty well so i I lose and I try to go right into into trying to to be constructive rather than destructive. And if you ask me what's a destructive behavior is throwing a tantrum, finding excuses and not doing the the work you have to do. So, learn how to lose. And the last one we're going to talk about is don't play. And this is not in general, it's don't play when you don't want to. Ask yourself if you really want to play chess before starting a game. Are you willing to invest all your energy into it? If the answer is no, then it's time to stop. How many of you have been playing an online game and let's say you win, you lose, whatever. Uh, you, you click rematch over and over and over. You don't even want to click. It's By this time, it's like muscle memory or something. You're clicking rematch. You're just addicted at looking at, at the green rating points going up. You just want to be higher rated than all your friends. Uh, you, just, you just want to win quick games. And that's a bad sign. That's a sign that you should stop. And that you should stop damaging your chest because many of you think oh i'm just not improving the chest uh, what's the i'm just having fun well you are having fun maybe i i also don't believe that but even if you believe that you're also damaging your chest so 
it's not that not only that you're not advancing you're damaging your chest you're learning that you have to be impulsive you're learning that you have to um play for rating points which is not the case you should play because you enjoy chess and this is not a secret once again if you're playing and enjoying you're gonna be better that's it uh i think we're gonna leave it like that if you have any questions about this if you think i i should i should have added something please let me know in the comments and as always have a nice day